Third order bend can be using tweed pliers. So this is a set of pliers developed by Charlie Tweed. This plier allows you to put progressive torque in. Yep. The individual torquing plier developed by Dr. Rose out of uh, Texas is this plier here. So let's do an individual third order bend. So this is called a third order bend, right? And a, a third order bend is called torque. So I'm going to show you a situation in a div two. We have a deep bite like this, and you've worked up your wires to 1825, but you still got a deep bite. So you want to express some more torque like that. And the way you're going to express that torque is in your 1925, you're going to put 20 degrees of torque. So what it means is, if this is your bracket, right, rather than the wire going in like this, the wire will now go in like that. And when the wire goes in like that and you close the gate, it's going to express the torque. Right? So individual torque involves two pliers. The first plier will simply be holding where you want the torque. And it's the distance of one bracket. Yeah, you want to do that? It, it's the distance of but that voice goes. Away. It's the distance of one bracket. You then come in with your um, uh, talking wrench. And which side's the O two two side on it? Can you see? There we go. Right. Um, one side is O one eight. One side is O two two. You literally come in to the side that's O two two, and it grabs the wire just in the one section. You see? Then holding tightly. You just basically bend that wire. As you bend the wire, the torque is now placed individually there. But as you place the torque, can you see how your arch form tends to constrict? So then you'll need to just, you know, either manually, just fingers or with a uh, Della Rosa, return back to the normal arch form. But that's an individual torque. Now, if you bend it up, that's positive torque. Yeah? If you bend it down, that's negative torque. If you bend it up and put it in the lower, that's negative torque. So just in the same way, if I bend this up 20 degrees in the upper, that same bend in the lower becomes minus 20. Okay? If I get this 20 degrees and I turn it upside down, then it's minus 20. But of course, it's swapped sides now, hasn't it? That just shows you the little bit I was trying to tell you about with brackets. Okay? So now we're talking about progressive torque. Progressive torque, here's a scenario. Here's your case, and you want to put in 20 degrees of extra torque, two to two. So um, you mark the wire between the um, uh, canine and the uh, lateral. Now, a good way for you to confirm you haven't introduced unwanted torque is to put a bend at the end of the wire. This is called a goalpost bend. So this goalpost bend allows you to see if you have any torque in the buckle segments. Because if you do this properly, you should not have that goalpost bending at the end of treatment. Do you understand? you need to cut that goalpost off before you put it in the mouth. Otherwise, you will have some very nice intrusion. Progressive torque. Progressive torque will start on one side. This is with tweed torquing pliers. It'll start on one side, and you'll put in 20 degrees of torque. Make sense? As you put in 20 degrees of torque, the next thing you should do is to lie the wire flat and see if you've introduced torque in the buckle segments. Here, you can see it's flat. Still zero torque in the buckle segment. So we have zero 
20 coming all the way here. Now, if you look at that goalpost, can you see how it's bent? Can you see how it's bent 20 degrees? Make sense? You then come to the other side of the goalpost, which is the side now you want to take the torque out. This is the biggest problem I see doctors do when they first do it. They go zero, they go 20, and then they put in another 20 degrees of torque. So now their buckle segment on the left is 40 with the goalpost leading in, and they're going to end up with an occlusal cam. Make sense? Yep. So with, um, with this uh, wire, with this section, you just take the torque out. So 0, 20, 20 taken out. Make sense? So when you look at that, that's almost like a car racing, um, what do you call that, chamfer? What do you call it when the camber, right? Okay. So that's zero. It then hits the canine, 20 degrees of torque, then back to zero. Does that make sense? Now, every time you do a bend, regardless of torque, you may introduce um, vertical discrepancies. So the best place to bend is on glass, like a glass slab, because then you can put the wire down. You can say, well, this is rocking and rolling. Obviously, it's rocking and rolling from where I put the last bend in. I'm just going to flatten that. You can see now that's much better. OK? So the bends at the end are to visualize the torque. When you finish doing this exercise, the uh, goalpost should be upright, because that shows zero torque. If they're leaning in or out, you've, you've introduced unwanted torque. All right? So that's the third order bend called torque. I've shown you individual torque. I've showed you progressive torque. In the same way, let's just say I have a cross bite. I've done my first order bend to push the teeth out. And as I push the teeth out, they're tipping. You understand? What sort of torque do I need to recover? I need positive root torque which is known as lingual crown torque or labial root torque. Do you understand? So let's just say I did my first sort of bend and I sent the patient away for six weeks. The crossbite looks better, but now I see that all those teeth up there are, are tipping like that. You see? Now I want to upright them. Well, how can I upright them? I can, in that same wire, just put in progressive torque in the buckle segments. You see? So what torque would that be? That would be torque where my root needs to move this way, right? Now, if my root needs to move that way, my crown moves inward, so it is actually negative torque, okay? So let's watch that. I'm gonna grab this now, maybe in the region of the premolar. I'm gonna grab that wire, and I'm gonna bend it 20 degrees down. Now, if you look at that goalpost, mimic the root. Can you see that? 